So when it comes to tubes, otherwise known as endotracheal tubes, remember that they really come in two flavors and it's simply called cuffed or uncuffed. And on the big people side, meaning adults, remember they got cuffed. And the rationale was simple and that's called adult airways are tubes, meaning they're big at the top and they're big at the bottom. And if in the heat of battle, meaning in a patient who's actively crashing and burning, if you were to go ahead and intubate them, forget to inflate the cuff and start bagging, where's the air go? And it's simply called out and around the tube. But up until relatively recently, some of y'all remember that adults got cuffed, but kids, especially little ones, got uncuffed. And the rationale was that their airways were described as being a funnel meaning they were big at the top and small at the bottom. The other issue when it comes to funnels was simply when you think about a house fire, meaning if you pulled a little kid out of a house fire with smoke inhalation, remember, not only are their lungs themselves screwed up, but remember what's going to kill them is airway edema. Because just like croup, when you have swelling at the bottom of the funnel, you don't have that much room to play with. So with that in mind, we were taught that adults got cuffed and little kids got uncuffed. And the idea was that if you would put that tube through the airway, and when it just passed through the bottom part of the funnel, that if you use the right size tube, the tissue wouldn't like having a piece of plastic there. So it would swell up on its own a little bit and form its own natural cuff. So that's why we were taught for years that adults got cuffed and kids got uncuffed. That's changing. More recently, now EMS, ER have caught up with pediatric ICU and anesthesia saying you can use cuff tubes in kids. And if you talk to more and more peds ICU docs, they're actually saying, you know what? They want you to use a cuff tube if you've got it in kids. The rationale is twofold. The first of which is when it comes to sizes. Now all the way down to a 3.0. Meaning the smallest human endotracheal tube, remember they make is a 2.5. This is not a whole lot bigger. So what that means in real life is if you're in the baby ICU, they still as a rule use uncuffed because we've always used uncuffed for the most part when it comes to babies. However, if you go on a road trip down the hallway from the baby ICU to the pediatric ICU, more and more of them are now again using cuff tubes in kids. And their rationale is number one, as we touched on, all the way down to a 3.0, they now make cuff tubes for kids. Other important fact is called, think about your near drowning kid. They are in ARDS with stiff lungs. It's taken everything you've got to make those stiff lungs go up and down. And if you have that kind of pressure with an uncuffed tube, where's the air go? It's called down right back out again. So that's why more peds ICU docs are again saying, if you've got one, please use it. And if it's working just fine, you don't have to inflate it, well, great. Don't inflate it. But if you're having trouble making air stay put, and all you got to do is put a little air in the cuff, it does an absolutely phenomenal job at helping to keep the air in and out the way you want it to go. And once the tube is in, especially on the hospital side, if you can have one of your respiratory therapists, go ahead and hook up the manometer. So that, just like we do in adults in the big people ICU, you can actually monitor how much pressure is in the cuff. Because, just like adults, it's way too easy to give way too much air and have way too much pressure. If you've got a cuff tube for kids, please use it.